Now we're going to move on to proof by cases, which is how we get statements out of disjunctions. The basic idea is this. Suppose we have A or B. If B leads to C validly, and A leads to C validly, then we can infer C. Let's see how this works. Our next rule deals with OR as well, but is more significant than the last. This is the rule of disjunction elimination. Disjunction elimination is about as exciting as disjunction and introduction is boring, in the sense that it allows us to take a sentence like P or Q and to extract from it some further claim R. Here's how this works. We proceed by a method called proof by cases. First, we assume P and derive R. Then, we assume Q and derive R. And this allows us to just assert that R. The textbook gives an example of this involving square root of 2 to the power of square root of 2. Whether or not it's irrational or rational itself, it's the product of these. This example is a bit involved, and I think more complicated than it needs to be. Don't worry too much about the underlying stuff. The point is just the structure that we have here. So let's see an example of this in action. Okay, let the constant T be Toronto and W be our weather forecaster. Today is June the 9th, and our weather forecaster, suppose, has predicted snow. This is not going to happen because it's too warm. Such a suggestion is ludicrous. But assume that it's going to rain in Toronto, or it's not going to rain in Toronto, in which case it will either be the case that Toronto is rainy or Toronto is not rainy. And in either case, our weather forecaster is wrong. We just want to come up with the claim here that wrong W, that the weather forecaster is wrong, but we can't get it out of this disjunction by just plucking it out. We have to do a proof by cases. So let's assume the left-hand disjunct, and from the conjunction elimination rule, we can extract wrong W. This rule was discussed in the last video. If we assume the other disjunct, that it's not rainy in Toronto, and the weather forecaster is wrong, we can do the same thing. By conjunction elimination, we get that the weather forecaster is wrong. And since these are our two disjuncts, this is all that we're dealing with, and assuming either one, we get the same conclusion, we're allowed to derive from this that the weather forecaster is wrong. This is pretty remarkable. I mean, look what we just did. We just took a disjunctive sentence, which doesn't assert anything taken on its own, and we derive from it a standalone assertion. And that's how disjunction elimination works, and the basis of it is this proof by cases. So in proof by cases, we assume each of the disjuncts, and then we show that they lead to the conclusion we want. And if all of the disjuncts lead to the same conclusion, then we can just conclude that conclusion from a disjunctive string. This will be the basis of our disjunction elimination rule that we discuss in the next series of lectures. And the basic structure of these is proof by cases.